Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the third video in building this propagation house in my backyard. Uh, I did a series like this last year, just in case this is the first video you're finding. Uh, there's a lot more information in the series I did last year on backyard plant propagation, so you might want to watch those. And this is the third episode this year, building this uh, metal frame house. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to build the end walls on both ends. So we have a place where the First of all, it makes it more rigid and it creates doors, you know, on, on that side over there. I don't need, really need a door, but it created a door on this side for me. It also creates a place for the plastic to wrap around the frame and be stapled to the end wall to keep the plastic tight and keep the plastic on the house. So that's the point of building these end walls. And I still need to bolt these hoops down to the frame. Uh, so I've got to drill some holes through the wood and through the metal and, and get those bolts in so this doesn't fly away. That's going to leave me with just a few steps. Uh, I, to get started propagating. I'm gonna to have to put the plastic on the top of it. Uh, I got a shade cloth in from Amazon that'll go over top of that plastic. And this thing needs to be anchored to the ground. When you put plastic on anything, the wind can turn it into a kite really quickly. So uh, I'll show you all the different ways that I can anchor this thing to the ground in the episode where I put the plastic on the house. But at the end of this one, we'll have the end walls on and have the frame uh, actually bolted all together and uh, that'll put us very close to being able to start propagation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find the center of this board that goes across here, and it happens to be right at 69 inches right there. I want a three foot door right here, so I need a, a foot and a half this way from the center and a foot and a half this way from the center, uh, which is pretty easy to do. Use my tape measure and go from the center right there, 18 inches right there, and 18 inches right there. Okay, that's my mark for my two uprights that frame in my door. One will go here, and I'll use a level on the side of it to make sure it's straight up and down, just like that. And then I'll actually mark the back of it right here at the height of the house. So right on the top of it, just using a screw and making a mark on the back of this board right here for my cut line. You would think that I'd be able to use this one and cut four out of it, but it just doesn't work like that. I hand bent these rails, so this one's definitely going to be different, and that one's going to be different, and that one's going to be different. So it's easier just to hold them up here, put a level on them, put it on your mark down there, and just mark the top, make a cut, and you're good to go. And I'll do that four times. So I'm going to end up with, a, with one here, one here, one there, and one there with a three-foot gap right here in the middle. And then I'm going to drill a hole right through here and through the metal and put a bolt through it. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to screw it down or toe nail it, I guess is what it would be called. But I'm going to use a screw at an angle and screw this to the bottom frame. Okay, so all four of the center uprights are in. I just use my skill saw after I marked them by hand. Like I say, I got to mark them all individually because they're not the same measurements, not even close really. I drilled the hole in up here at the top and uh, ran a carriage bolt through that. Uh, this is a three and a half inch carriage bolt right there. This is a two, uh, pressure treated uh, two by four by eights is what I'm cutting this out of. And uh, then it's uh, screwed in from uh, both sides right at the base. I also took the time to go ahead and drill uh, through here and uh, through this and uh, have a bolt running through the frame. Right there, as you can see, I haven't tightened any of these bolts down yet on this entire frame. I'll do that after I'm finished with it, but there you go. Uh, and that makes a perfect little three foot opening here. Now I'm gonna put a piece here and a piece here and then do the same thing on the other side. So I've got four more uprights to put in. So now that step is complete. Again, it's drilled in the top, bolted through. Uh, I used the four foot level to make sure it's level top to bottom and then it's toe screwed into the bottom right there and there, which could be nails, it doesn't have to be screws. Uh, these are uh, two feet apart. I measured two feet out here uh, for no particular reason. That was just a measurement I used uh, all the way around. All of those are two feet and two feet and two feet apart over there. So all my vertical uh, pieces are in here. And uh, the next thing I need to do is create a frame that goes to there and goes to there and goes to there and goes to there like that. And again, there's no particular measurements here. Here's a board right here that I am just going to basically uh, lay in place right there. And then I'm just gonna mark 
where I need to cut it, you know, top and bottom, just like that. Again, same thing up here between these two. I'm just gonna set this up here. I want it right, I want it even with the top of that board right there and uh, even with the top of that board right there. So I'm just taking one piece and running it right across there. This won't involve any bolts. Uh, I'll just screw these top pieces in. But I need to create a board that runs there to there to there to there and down to there on both sides. This is where the plastic will wrap over and get stapled to this board that'll be right here. Uh, you'll see it in just a second. I'm just gonna screw those together. And then I'm gonna put one additional board right across here and that will create a little bit of a vent right here. We can cut the plastic out if we need to, if it's getting too hot in this house later. Holly's not being very helpful. She's just laying over here in the grass. Uh, these other ones that I bent over here, I'm actually gonna use on my vegetable garden in the fall uh, and build a little hoop house out of that just to uh, extend the season on my vegetables or even extend it into the early winter with some leafy uh, greens and that kind of thing. But I'll show you when I get to that. Okay, here's the end wall on this thing. And again, all I did was hold these boards up here and uh, make a mark. And then I uh, screwed them in place, you know, right there. And this is perfectly even across the top right here going down. You know, all these are just evened off. The plastic will come around and it'll get stapled along the top of this board all the way across. But the house is very rigid now. It looks great. I mean, it's a tiny little greenhouse, but it's going to look fantastic. And uh, not, a, not a crazy amount of money, really. These were this ended up being uh, eight, eight foot two by fours and they're pressure treated. And then of course that bottom was uh, three uh, 12 foot pressure treated two by fours. So that's where I am on lumber. And again, it was, uh, I think it was seven of those uh, top rails for the uh, chain link fence. And uh, I've got a grand total of uh, 15 bolts in this thing. There's four uh, on the face on this side, four on the face on the other side, uh, four, uh, for one for each corner right here, and then there's three on the purlin across the top. So 15, three and a half inch uh, carriage bolts. And I used a 5 16 uh, drill bit, and the bolt's slightly smaller than that. But overall, this thing is really, really nice. It just needs the plastic put on it and the gravel. So in order to get this video up this morning, I don't have time to ride up to uh, the box store and get the uh, gravel. I'm probably gonna get about 12 bags of the cheapest gravel I can find. I don't care what it is. Last year, I used that little pea gravel not for any particular reason other than it was the cheapest bag uh, on the road that day when I went. So I'm going to get about 12 50 pound bags. You don't really need to see it. I'm going to cut the top off the bag and pour it in there and spread it out evenly. Again, just creating another barrier between the ground and our rooted cuttings. That plastic will never lay flat and it will collect a little bit of water and uh, that gravel just, mean, just helps us not have sitting water in that greenhouse. We might end up with mosquitoes or who, who knows what, but uh, so that's that's pretty much it. So I need gravel, plastic, uh, plastic I've already got, um, shade cloth I've already got, and it needs to be anchored to the ground. That'll be in the fourth video, and then the fifth video will be we'll start on cuttings. I think I'm going to. Uh, somebody had asked about um, will I show uh, potting them up and what I use to pot things up. So I think what I'm going to start with as early as next Thursday or Friday. I think I'm going to root a bunch of um, lantana. Uh, it's a flowering perennial here in my area. It's probably uses an annual further in the north, but it roots really, really quickly. And so I think I'm going to do a tray or two of that as the very first thing we're going to root in here. And that way it'll root very, very quickly, maybe within a week, week and a half or two weeks, uh, I can pot it up. And so we can grow something out along the side of rooting the other things during the season. So you can actually see what I would do with it after uh, it roots out. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, give it a like if it's helpful. Uh, subscribe to the channel to make sure that you see uh, future updates on this. Thanks for watching.